welcome to this special edition of the Coronation Street Collection. This time we're going to be doing something a little different. Over the next 90 minutes or so, we'll be looking at two ladies who over the years have broken the hearts of the many men who've been fortunate enough to cross their paths, Emily Bishop and Mavis Wilton. Of course, many years ago, when they first entered street life, they were Emily Nugent and Mavis Riley. We'll come to Mavis a little later, but first, let's concentrate on Emily. In 1960, Emily met Leonard Swindley through her good works at the Mission Hall. At that time, Emily ran a baby clothes shop, but the business was in a little difficulty, so who else could she turn to for advice, if not Mr Swindley? Mr Swindley's business was experiencing a bit of difficulty too, so he suggested that they join forces. This was to be the beginning of a relationship which would develop into a romance that neither of them expected, but both of them needed. Nugent, what are you doing here at this late hour? Working for others, as usual, I've no doubt. Oh, it's for the Arbor Sixties meeting. I thought I'd just see that everything was in order. Oh, that's quite a coincidence. I'm here on the same errand myself. Well, flowers are always a help, aren't they? It was a happy thought. Where did you get these choice blooms, may I ask? Oh, these, they're from my sister's garden. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, oh it's just a few sweet williams. Ah, your usual modesty. I'm afraid you underestimate your decorative ability, Miss Nugent. Oh. What's your next little task? Um, oh, I've got some pencils and paper in case they want to make some notes. Oh, yes. Well, rather a lot of pencils there, Miss Nugent. It's in the left over from our last beaker drive, Mr Swindley. Ah. I hope it was all right to take them. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, perfectly permissible. But, uh, you were quite right to mention the matter to me. I, I'm sure you understand my heavy responsibility with regard to mission property. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> May I take this opportunity of thanking you for your invaluable service? All the more remarkable in a lady as, as busy as yourself. Yes, your little shop must take up much of your attention, and the fact that you give so generously of your time has been noticed. I assure you, it has been noticed. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You listen to that. You must learn to appreciate your own merit. I, I had no idea that uh, a few words of well-earned praise would disturb you like this. I, I do apologize. Oh, no, it's not that. Would you care to unburden yourself, Miss Nugent? Remember, the trouble shared is a trouble halved. Uh, unless, of course, it's uh, of too delicate a nature to be discussed. It's up. It's up. What is up, Miss Nugent, if you'll pardon the expression? The lease is up on my baby shop and they won't renew it. Oh. Mr. Swindley, whatever shall I do? The lease has expired. It's unthinkable. It's terrible. You have my deepest sympathy. I've nowhere to go. I've looked and looked. Eureka! Pardon? Eureka, Miss Nugent. I have a solution. You must... You must come... Come along with me without delay. Move in with me without delay. Uh, that is, uh, if I may put it a little differently, we must uh, amalgamate. Uh, on a purely business footing, of course. Uh, what do you say to that? Oh, Mr. Swindley. I thought so. My little business isn't doing as well as it did. Uh, a seasonal drop in sales, no doubt, but uh, together we could go from strength to strength. Of course, you could... Uh, Bring along as much stock of your own as you like. My little emporium has plenty of storage space. Uh, <laughs> but I would suggest that, uh, nominally speaking, our relationship should be that of employer-employee. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, consent to be employed by me, Miss Nugent? Oh, Mr. Swindley. May I take that as a sign of assent? Oh, it's beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Nugent, you, you really must control yourself. I find the sight of a lady in tears extremely distressing. Allow me. Oh, thank you. Now perhaps we'd better postpone any further discussion of our little venture until a more suitable hour. I'll leave you to your charitable labours. 
and trust that a well-earned night's repose awaits you, free from all worry and anxiety. Your hanky. Please. Your need is greater than mine. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll wash and iron it for you tomorrow. No, not at all. Good night, Mr. Good night. One, is it? Yes, that's right, ma'am. Thank you very much. Is there anything I can do to help? Not for the moment, thank you. Oh, Chucky and Bibbs. We had one or two as a trial line, four and six. You must be very pricey. Mine go through it three eleven and a half. Swindlers are never knowingly oversold. All present and correct? Yes, everything seems to be here. Oh, you've rather more stock than I anticipated, but uh, some shelves have been cleared for you, but you're obviously going to need some more. Have you any suggestions, Miss Pemberton? I'm afraid I haven't. Well, uh, couldn't the uh, cushion covers and... Uh, and seats, uh, 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 dress shields, rather, uh, go in the back. Couldn't some baby linen go in the back? Oh, well, uh, naturally, some of it would have to go there, but I, uh, I think we must try and give Miss Nugent a little more space. Do you? Yeah. Now, Miss Pepperton, the fold. Remember the fold. Bah! Well, I'm sure I can make do with whatever's available. But no need to make do. <coughs> no need to make do. Space will be found, Miss Nugent. We'll have your liberty bodices and matinee jackets all housed away in no time. St oh. Going to make the tea, Mrs. Pemberton? Salt of the earth, you know, Mrs. Pemberton. Yes. One of the old school. I know what you're thinking. Six months' time, and he'll be your beloved Leonard. You haven't a chance. I've been trying. <gasps> All right. So I'm giving you the satisfaction of knowing I've been trying since 1924. Miss Pemberton. And all I've ever had for Christmas was handkerchiefs. And artificial flower birthdays. The old order changeth, eh, Miss Nugent? But what are we going to do about the new? <laughs> I don't doubt we shall need an assistant. We may have to advertise for one, but uh, at the moment our most immediate need is a cup of tea. Would you care to familiarise yourself with the kitchen while I table, uh, keep my eye on things here? Through here? Straight through, Miss Nugent. I'm not sure now. I think it's lovely. It doesn't feel like me. Well, isn't that what you wanted? Oh, I, I don't know. Hey, how about a Tom Jones bow to finish it off? I bet it would suit you. Albert Finney had one in the film, you know. All the girls are wearing them. All the girls. Oh, well, doors close, don't they? You can't pretend otherwise. Doors? Things you used to be able to do. Things you took for granted. Oh, you are thoughtful this morning. <laughs> I mean, wearing ribbons, for instance. I always used to when I was a little girl. Two plaits tied up on top with a big bow. But ribbons in my hair, they just look foolish now. You get older. Oh, it's not as bad as all that. New things happen, new interests. You know, I'm beginning to get used to it. It doesn't feel quite so strange now. Well, it won't. I like it. Yes, it, it's really rather Quite nice. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. Uh, well, I should long. Uh, hello, Miss Newton. You have just been experimenting a little bit on me. Eh? Hey? Oh, yes. Very nice. Very well, nice. it's nothing too drastic, is it? I mean, it'll look a lot different when I get dressed. I mean, when I'm not in me working things. And a, a bit of makeup always helps, I think. But I haven't just got any with me now. So, um, 
How much uh, do I owe oh, you? Oh, um, with the reconditioner, nine and six. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And well, I'll be in again next you. week. Oh, Just pop this on, it'll stop it getting... Oh, don't when... flatten it. Oh, no, I will Bye. Bye. Good evening, Miss I hope I'm not late. No, do sit down. Oh, yes, I'll just take things. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you. One of my favourites. Mm. It's so peaceful and tranquil. Oh, that, that's the wrong side. My pleasure, my pleasure entirely, Miss Student. <laughs> Did the OS nightgowns arrive after I'd left? I've been expecting them all day. Uh, they'll be here first thing in the morning. Oh, good. Yes. Only we were running very low. Yes. I thought I you might like... Oh. Beg your pardon. No, 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 you were first. Well, there's nothing really. I was only going to say that I, I see you have a pineapple. pineapple. Yes. Perhaps we could sit down now. Everything is ready. Oh! Oh! oh. It's, uh, just. Fond of fresh pineapple. Oh, fruit of the gods. Perfect. I don't believe it. It's Parma ham. You do like it. Oh, my dear Miss Student, a veritable cornucopia. And there's tomato soup with cream, escalope of veal with mushrooms, new potatoes, and broccoli. Then the pineapple, of course, and cheese biscuits and coffee. Quite a simple meal, really. I do hope it'll be all right. Did you say escalope of veal? It's one of my favourites. Oh, mine also. Oh, really? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. And broccoli spears. And broccoli spears. I see. Do commence. <laughs> Good. Mm. It is all mm. right. Mm. <laughs> Exquisite. I was about to say. Oh, I am and, um, pleased. <laughs> what I was saying. Almost a canoe, we, we appear to have identical taste. White mm. wine, Mr. Swindley. Mm. Graves to aid the digestion, <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh. <laughs> Thank you. Swindley. No, no, thank you. Sufficient unto the gods. <laughs> More wine. Oh, I was surprised at you, Miss Eugene. I've also got you as a very temperate assistant. <laughs> I am, but not mm. just an assistant. 
Oh, no, 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 more than that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like to think that all we really shared was our place of employment. Oh, no, I've always had a very high regard for you on a personal level. Uh, after mm. all, it, it isn't our shop, is it? Mr. Papagopoulos is really only our employer. He had nothing to do with our uh, attachment. After all, life isn't only work. No, but uh, if the work is congenial and happy, then one has more peace of mind. I wish I could say that I had peace of mind. Well, surely you're contented, Miss Nugent? No. Apprehensive. Of what? The future and what it holds. Oh, but is that so important? I mean, when we shuffle off this mortal coil... Aren't you afraid of growing old? Oh, we must all grow old in time, Miss Nugent. Alone, without companionship. We all have someone. I'm glad you think that, Mr. Swindley. It's important to both of us. It's important to everyone, Miss oh, Nugent. But I'm a woman. <clears throat> I look for permanence. We have each other, but will we always? Well, I suppose as long as Mr. Papagopoulos sees fit to employ us. Oh, but outside be... business hours. Oh, well, when we're out into exhibition, music, these things bring us together beyond the bounds of trade. Precisely. Mm. We share so much. I wonder that we don't share it all. Share our lives. Why don't we join together our interests in nuptial agreement? Yes, it sounds uh, an excellent plan to be. Most desirable arrangement. Nuptial? Do I understand what you mean marriage, Miss Nugent? Why not? Miss Nugent, is it the vintage? Is it the hour? Mrs. Swindley, I'm serious. We could join together in holy matrimony. But we pastors and preachers fly from but the thing. We're not equipped work to deal together, with together, side by side. Oh, no, no. On the day of judgment, we stand alone. Oh, but the years till then. We're in our meditation, Miss Nugent. Mr. Swindley. Oh, please, uh, good night, madam. Shall I give you another chance? In what respect, Leonard? Oh, wait. Hasn't she come in yet? No uh, phone call, no nothing. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, she's been in. Well, what are you looking so worried about? You don't understand, Leonard. Miss Nugent has left. Left? You mean for good? For good. And I'm plagued by the fear that it may be my fault. Yet I was not the instigator. Aye, aye. What have you been up to, eh? Have you had a row or something? No, no, not exactly a row. As a matter of fact, don't tell me she's taking a fancy to you. Well, breathe in, mate. Take it in your stride. If her intentions are honourable, give in. Give in even if they're not. What have you got to lose? You're a lucky fella to have an opportunity like that, you know. I wish my problems were as simple as yours. Simple? Yeah, only well, you're a man, aren't you? What could be simpler than that? It's the only bit of heaven this side of the epitaph. Poor old soul. There, but for the grace of God, Mr. Walker. Ah. You are late, Mr. Swindley. Somewhat on your mind. <laughs> on my conscience. Oh, well. That's not a bad thing sometimes, I suppose. Care to join me in a glass of port? No, 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 thank you. Oh, well, I'm going to have one. <laughs> Annie being away like. Are you sure now? Yes, I think I ah, am. You know, Mr. Swindley, I suppose you know more about the score with matters of conscience than I do. Myself, I just plod on. You, um, you've known the blessed union of marriage for a long time, I believe, Mr. Walker. Ah, oh, 25 years and no regrets. Well, uh, not worth mentioning. 25 years. Ah. Indeed. Now, Mr. Swindley, what's all this leading up to? Miss Nugent has asked me to marry her. Nay, get on. And I've refused. Oh. Well, I suppose you know best. But she did look after you well and nurse you when you were sick. Yes, yes, indeed. I've been thinking. Perhaps I've never appreciated her enough. After all, she did devote most of her life to me and to the shop for the last three years. Oh, well, I've always had a great respect for Miss Nugent. Oh, and I, her loyalty and constancy have always been a mainstay of her character. And, uh, 
Her domesticity, too. I, um, I was fortunate enough to enjoy a sample of that only, uh, only last night. A man without a home, Mr. Walker, is a man lost indeed. <sighs> I've been wondering, mm -hmm. have I the right to spurn? Am I withholding something which it is within my power to give? Mm, that's up to you, isn't it? A match, would you say? Eh? Nay, nay, it's no to do with me. <laughs> I shouldn't like to advise on a case like this. I mean, I don't have to take the consequences, do I? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. Mr. Walker, join me in another drink. Eh? Oh, thank you. Oh, no, no. Not a drink, but a toast. It is. Yes. Yes, I'm aware of the time, Miss Nugent. May I come in? I was just going to bed. This will only take a moment. A moment which I hope will be the harbinger of years. What do you mean? I believe, Miss Nugent, that it is a woman's privilege to change her mind. Would it be in order for a man to do the same? Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Samuel. Well, well, Leonard, it's nice to see you. Again, it's been a long time. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, <coughs> this is, uh, this is Miss Nugent, Mr. Ross. Oh, Sam, do you miss a friend of Mr. Swindler's, a friend of mine? Pleased to meet you. <laughs> now, uh, what can I do for you? We'd like to see some engagement rings, uh, please. Yeah, not. Oh, uh, yes? <laughs> well, congratulations, Lenny. <laughs> oh, you sly devil. I didn't know you had it in you. It's a nice looking girl you've picked there. <laughs> Thank you. <Lenny. laughs> oh, you'd like to see some uh, engagement rings, eh? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, well, now, here we are. There are the, some lovely ones here. And uh, yeah, they're all second hand, no purchase tax. Now, how about that one? Now, look at that stone. Isn't it a beauty? Be careful it doesn't dazzle your eyes. <laughs> oh, it is rather nice. You'd have a look at it uh, by the door, but don't run away. Oh. <laughs> Lenny, yeah. look, uh, how much do you want to pay? Well, I hadn't really thought about it. Well, would you like me to work the old How's Your Father? How's Your Father? Well, you know, tell her the ring's worth a tenner more than it is. I mean, it uh, creates a good impression. Oh, no, 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 Samuel, I, I can't start my engagement with a falsehood. Oh, suit yourself. <laughs> Well, my dear. No, no, I don't think so. Oh. Well. Oh, there's a nice one there. Ah, yes. Yeah, you've got good taste, you know. It's a beautiful oh. piece of jewellery, is that? It's opal set in zircons. It's uh, very unusual. Mm. Uh, try it on. Oh, it's lovely. Look. <laughs> yes, it's very attractive. How much is that? Uh, 30 pounds to a customer, 25 to a friend. Hmm, you, you like that one? Oh, yes, but it's awfully expensive. Oh, no, 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 I, I mustn't measure one's affinities in, in monetary value. I would... Uh, we'll take it. Right, I'll get a box. Oh, no, no, I, I'll wear it. Oh. Mr... Uh, will you put it on for me? Hmm? Oh, yes. Now engaged, they looked forward to the wedding, but sadly, Emily was to have second thoughts on her way to the altar. But you... you, you don't mean it, lass. I do, Mr. Walker. I'm not going. But you, you... you've got to. Everybody's waiting, everybody's... You'd better tell the taxi driver, Mr. Walker. He might have some other jobs to do. Now look, love, it's your wedding day. They're waiting at the church. Mr. Swindley's waiting, everybody... Mr. Walker, it's wrong. I can't go. How can I go? I can't go when I know it's wrong, can I? Not when you know you're doing something terrible. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Walker. I... Nay, lass, it doesn't matter about me. It's only you that matters. You and Mr. Swinley. Now, can I get you a drink? A little drop of brandy or somewhat? It's funny, isn't it? How the mind does things. And you pretend something. And you know it's pretending deep down. And you just take no notice. But you've got to in the end, haven't you? Because it's wicked if you don't. What is it, lass? Isn't he the right one? And you pretend more and more as time goes on, you see. It's like being a bit mad in a way, honestly. And you let things happen because you want them to. And all the time, you know. It's me that's not the right one. Hey, I'm sorry, lass. I'm very sorry. I don't know what I can... I mean, I... And I feel so calm. I feel very calm. I always wanted Mr. Swindley. I used to look at him in the shop and imagine doing things for him. Laughing about who should have the broken egg at breakfast. When you break the yolks sometimes, putting them in. Shouting at him. Only joking, sort of, about getting to take his library books back. Things like that. Well, he's there, lass. You've only to get in that taxi. That's all you have to do. Five minutes and it'll all happen. He doesn't want to get married, Mr. Walker. Not to me, anyway. Not to anybody, I don't suppose. It was all me. He probably wouldn't admit it. But we both know. There's got to be... Affection, you see. If there isn't. I'm right. Aren't I, Mr. Walker? Yeah, there's no talk and say, lass. No, no one can. They say there's always a comical side. Some people laugh, you know, when they hear someone's died. It's not out of nastiness, it's sort of reaction. I suppose it looks funny putting a wedding dress on, just to take it off again. Now, look, love, I've got to ask you. I don't want to do the wrong thing. But are you sure you won't come? It doesn't matter about being late, and you can forget everything you told me. I'll never give it another thought. It'll all be dead and buried. I'm not going, Mr. Walker. I knew, you know. All those years I wanted to marry him. I knew I never would. Come in. It's open. Hello, Mr. Swindley. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no. No, please don't upset yourself. It was the only thing. Yes. It doesn't matter. It's a terrible thing to do to anyone. No, no, no. Whatever you think is right. I thought it was fated at first. My father couldn't come to give me away, and then my brother, the telegram. I began to think we just weren't fated. But we knew, didn't we? I thought it might give us security, companionship, a measure of happiness. It's not enough, is it? No. You wouldn't have been happy, would you? I wanted to do You wouldn't it... have been happy, though. I'm not a young man. Set in my habits. One grows introspective. It isn't easy to then change. I wouldn't have been happy either, you see. No. Things can't be the same now, can they? The shop and everything. In time, perhaps. As far as I'm concerned, everything will be the same. I've made such a fool of you. Well, both of us. 
Will you cancel the honeymoon and the co-op hall? Yes, yes, in a moment. Look, will you be all right? You do look nice in your suit. Really distinguished. Piece of cotton. That's a very beautiful dress. I, I don't think I've ever seen oh, you. It's look got a so. bit crumpled now. It did look nice before. There isn't anything else to say, is there? See you in the shop, Miss Newton. Business as usual. Yes. Business as usual. Goodbye. This sort of dithering on the brink of matrimony wasn't confined to Emily. Mavis did her fair share of it too. When she met Derek, she too was set fair for wedded bliss. That is, after a few false starts, only to find herself on the wedding morning plagued with the same sort of doubts as Emily. There you are. Now, when you stand there in front of the altar, you'll know you're perfect from top to toe. Rita. What? I can't do it. What do you mean? I can't go through with it. Nerves. That's all it is. I'll get your little drink and I'll have one with you. No, I, I'm sorry about this, Rita. But I mean it. Oh, give over. In 15 minutes, you'll be walking up that aisle, right as rain. No. I'm sorry, but there isn't going to be a wedding. I can't marry Derek. Why can't you marry him? <gasps> What's made you change your mind? I haven't changed my mind, not really. I think I've known all along, deep down, that I couldn't marry him. Oh, honestly, Mavis. You can't arrange to get married and ten minutes before the ceremony calmly turn round and say I can't go through with it. Well, I'm sorry if you think I'm being unreasonable, Rita. You are. You're being totally unreasonable. No, I was unreasonable before. I should never have said I'd marry him in the first place when I knew it wasn't right. And why the hell did you say yes if that's how you felt? It just seemed easier at the time. I mean, I meant to say no. I was going to say no and then I heard myself saying yes and then it was too late and... I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Well, my God, Mavis. You're going to hurt him now. How do you think he's going to feel? You're going to crucify him. No. No. What are you doing? I'm trying to get hold of Derek. See if he can talk some sense into you. Come on. Come on! Oh, I feel terrible about this. I never wanted to hurt him. I can't go through with it. There's no answer. Of course he'll have left. He'll be in the church waiting for you. Da 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 My word, Mavis, you look great. I really mean that, you do. You, you, you look knockout. Alf. Would you mind waiting for us in the car? There's something wrong. Alf, if you just give us another minute. Yeah, we want to get off, you know. We don't want to be late, do we? <laughs> oh, well. All right. Drink that and tell your Auntie Rita all about it. Though I feel more like your Granny Rita. I think I've aged 20 years in the last 24 hours. I'm sorry to give you so much trouble, Rita. I didn't mean to. Don't be daft. I'm only joking. So are you going to tell me what happened after I left you yesterday? Well, I just knew that I didn't want to be there when everybody got back, so... I changed into my ordinary clothes and I picked up my case and went. I know you went. Where did you went to? It wasn't here, because I came back to check. That door wasn't bolted then. No. And to Piccadilly Station. I don't know where I thought I was going. Back home, perhaps. Although since my auntie Edie died, I mean, there's been nobody there for me anyway. I just sat on the platform and I watched people come and go. It's 
dozens of pigeons there. Did you know? They're all flying about in the station all the time. They don't seem to be worried by the trains or anything. And then what? Then I came back here. Didn't seem anywhere else to go. You did right, Flower. You don't want to be wandering around strange places on your own state you're in. I'm all right, Rita. I'm surprised how calm I am. No regrets? No. No. Derek's a good man and he'll make somebody a good husband, but he wasn't right for me. I think I always knew that, really. I just wanted him to be right. Because... Because it all seemed so suitable. Am I making any sense? Yes. Yes, you are. Far too many people get married because, well, they talk themselves into thinking that's what's expected of them. Instead of looking underneath to see if it's the person they want, not just a husband or wife. Oh, I just feel so ashamed, Dory. Oh, no. <laughs> I've done a terrible thing. I, mean, I don't so much mind making a fool of myself, but I've made a fool of Derek as well. He didn't deserve that. Emily was a great help. She's always so sensible. Thanks. Oh, I mean, you are too. Of course you are. You, you both are. It's just that, well, she's more sensible. Don't worry, love. I know what you mean. I'm not always as down to earth as I should be. Len used to say I was scatty. Well, oh, you're not that. No, you. Well, you're fun. I mean, however big a problem is, you can always see some laughter in it somewhere. Well, it's a gift, is that? Derek didn't have it. I mean, he could never see humour in anything. That's one of the reasons Look, why. everything keeps coming back to Derry. Can we just forget him and talk about someone else? Oh, how can I forget him, Rita, after what I did to him? Mavis, you didn't do anything to Derek. He didn't turn up either. He sent a message to say he couldn't go through with it. Derek didn't turn up at the church? His best man came with his apologies. I don't believe it. Did he do that to me? Maybe it's you did it to him. Yeah, well, he didn't know that, though, did he? Oh, dear. Oh, Lord, I, I don't think I can cope with this. Well, doesn't that make you feel better? Better? Well, that's a stupid thing to say if ever I heard one. Well, you've been feeling terrible, thinking you've hurt him and let him down. At least now you know you've nothing to feel oh. guilty about. Oh, this is terrible, Rita. I just imagine what everybody's saying about me. So humiliated, Rita, what am I going to do? Well, there's not a lot you can do, is there, except get on with your life. Which brings me to the problem of Sonia. Understandably, she wants to know if she's still got a job. Well, of course she's got a job. How can I go there? Serve in the shop. Well, I know I'm a public laughing stock. So what do you want me to do? Break that door up and drop food down <laughs> chimney for the next 30 years? You see? You see? You just make a joke of everything. Oh, five minutes ago, that was one of my biggest attributes. <sighs> Look, love, you're tired. We both are. If we carry on like this, we'll only end up falling out. So, I vote we have a good night's sleep and we'll talk about this in the morning. All right. Well, it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. And as we know, Mavis and Derek did get married in the end, but we'll come to that later. Emily, on the other hand, changed her mind about marriage and finally tied the knot. But it wasn't with Leonard Swindley. It was with photographer Ernest Bishop. In fact, it was at Emily's and Ernie's engagement party that we were first introduced to Mavis, and even in those early days, Mavis was feeling left on the shelf. Excuse me. Could I have another small gin, please? You can have a bottle if you like, Joe. <laughs> well, I don't think so, thank you. They make rather a handsome couple, don't they? Not bad. I've seen worse. I might understand that neither of you is particularly enamoured of Emily and Ernest. It's not that love, it's not them as persons, it's just the fact that they're engaged. But we're still on the shelf, you see. Oh, I know just how you feel. 
Oh, I really think it's too much of Emily to get herself engaged. I mean, she's quite past it, not to have no sense. Well, I wouldn't care so much if she didn't flaunt herself, but that's what she's doing, flaunting herself like a latter-day Rita Hayworth. Oh, thank you. I don't think I can stand much more of it, I really don't. Why, she's older than what I am. At least six months old. Oh, well, that's about I think she's flips. Oh. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? Well, grab the next offer I get with both hands. <laughs> On your feet, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. The toast is Ernie and Emily. Ernie and Emily. God bless her. Not hungry? Not really. Bacon's nice this week. Mavis came round. That's funny, I've just been with Jerry. Why do you automatically pair them together? Why not? They always are together. Doesn't actually mean they are a pair, though, does it? Best thing we've done for a long time, that is getting Andy in, you know. He gets on so well with everybody. It's the liver very dry. It's delicious. Well, nearly delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Come on, love, eat up. It's going to cost us a lot of money. Look, love, if it makes you happier and gives you more time to yourself, it's worth every penny. Do you know, since we've been married, you haven't had any time to yourself at all. Life's for living, love, not for slaving. You wait till next week, you won't know you're bored. Oh, it'll be lovely. Working in the shop was a kind of escape. I suppose all jobs are, really. I'm not with you. Well, you haven't time to stop and think, but once the excuse is gone, it's like when a man retires. Oh, there's those new curtains you've been trying to new finish. Curtains? I'm talking about fundamentals. Oh. Something Mavis said about children. Mm -hmm. People like us with a comfortable home, food, warmth, we shouldn't really be keeping it all just for ourselves, should we? Mavis said this? After all, we do have a choice. I mean, we might not be very good at it, but at least we could give it a try. Give what a try, Emily? Well, Ernest, I think we ought to offer to be foster parents. All those children needing affection, someone to care about them. You're quite serious about this, aren't you? Crying out for people. <laughs> you won't know what you're going to say. It's a very big step, and, and I'm, I ought to give it more thought, but maybe I've been thinking about it for a long time, unconsciously, I mean. There's been such an emptiness. Please, Ernest. Well... Or couldn't we at least make inquiries? And I thought you wanted a rest. Oh, please. All right. Emily and Ernie made inquiries about fostering and very soon found themselves doing a spot of emergency caring. They discovered that looking after children was a little more difficult than they had expected. But in spite of everything, Emily was in her element and Ernie quite liked it too. The children finally went back to their father and Emily and Ernie hoped that they would eventually be given a family to foster on a more permanent basis. Unfortunately, before that could happen, Emily was to receive some news that was to shatter her world forever. It's bound to get better. Oh, it must. I'm sorry about your breakfast. Oh, that's all right, doesn't it? There we are, darling. I don't know about Fast Shoes? Right uh, just a minute. I mean, it's bound to be difficult, isn't it, the first night? Well, yes, it'd be a bit strange for them. Well, not just for them. Yeah. But whatever, I mean, isn't it amazing? Buzz with children in the house. Yeah, amazing. And slightly frightening. Oh, slightly? Well, at least these are all right. Vernon will have to have new shoes. Really? Oh, they're in a terrible state. Well, it's up to you. Well, what are you going to do with them today? Take him for shoes. Well, it won't take all day. Well, sometime I've got to take those sheets to the laundrette. Oh, well, if you could do the shopping, it would be a yeah, help. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, have you got a list? <laughs> now, when, in between getting up at all hours of the night, changing the bed at six o'clock in the morning, and getting them washed, dressed and fed, do you think I've had time to write a list? Well, 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 what do I get? Oh, well, don't be so helpless. You know what we eat. 
Are we still sure this is uh, a good idea? It's only been for one night. Well, that's what I mean. Oh, well, just get some eggs, some sausages yeah. and potatoes. We'll oh. survive on that. That's if we last a day through. Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, I suppose this is what caring for children's like. Couldn't they have sent us a couple of easier ones for beginners? I don't think these are particularly difficult. Well, I'm glad to hear that they're not difficult. But I'm going to leave them to you. Having fun, old man. Are you? What's on earth happened? Oh, nothing. He's just taken the dressing room table drawer and chucked it downstairs. That's what he's done. And I'm off. With you in a minute. As you can see, I'm just a... Yes? Just give us the money, mate, and you won't get hurt. Pardon? You heard. Give us the money. Now, just keep your mouth shut and give us the money. Put it in that bag. Come on, faster. Oh, come on, you're only young lad. Shut up. Just put the money in the bag. All of it. And then wage packets. Come on. Right, give it here. Slowly. How's it going? They're taking the... You bloody idiot! Come on, let's get out of here! Tomorrow! Where's the owner? In the office, sir. Right. Sorry, love. Where is it you're going? I want to know what's happened. You work here, love? I, I want to know what's happened. My husband works here. Come on, I'll be your road to your house. You say your husband works here, love. What's his name? Uh, Ernest. Ernest Bishop. She's the wife. What happened? Emily. He's been hurt, Ernest. Quite badly hurt. How? How is he hurt? How? There's, there's been a robbery. How is he hurt? He's been shot. Mrs. Bishop? I'm very sorry. In the end, there was nothing we could do. The residents of the street rallied round Emily and Mavis came to stay with her for a few days. Before, but I've been stuck in the shop. Um, the corner shop, that is. I'm looking after it for Rena because her mother's been taken ill again. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, she's not too bad, I don't think. <laughs> well, it's nice and cosy in here. Yes. Um, no, maybe don't let me keep you from your meal. Oh, no, that's no you right. just maybe carry on because something smells good. Miss Deirdre made me pie. Oh. Maybe are you going somewhere? Uh, the case. Only here. Now, it's all organised, Emily. Rita knows I'm staying, and I've told her it might be for a few days. Oh, I say that pie smells as if it might be burning. I'll go and see it for you, shall But, Mavis... No, you just sit down and relax. Like I say, it's all organised. Uh, I'm afraid I'll have to go back to the shop. The licence inside of it, you know, but only for about an hour. As life returned to normal, both Emily and Mavis took an interest in other things. Although nothing quite so awful ever happened to Mavis, she did have her troubles with the opposite sex. 
there were a series of disastrous relationships which she had to end or were ended for her before she finally settled down. Jerry. First, there was Jerry Booth. Yes? That was the real you talking last night, wasn't it? Drunk or not? Look, it makes me cringe to think what I did. It does, really. You know, I'm sorry for you, Jerry. Pardon? Well, I, I thought I was afraid of life, but I'm not as bad as you are. Well, how do you mean, Mary? You're sorry. That afraid of life that... You just spend your life living in the past. You're pining after a woman that you can't have and just living on memories. That's not true. Yes, it is true, Jerry, and I'm fed up. I'm fed up with just being taken for granted and treated as if I were a... I don't now, know look what. here, Mavis, you no. can't say that... don't try justifying yourself, Jerry. I couldn't stand it, not now. Just go away, please. Go away. <laughs> then she got engaged to a Spanish waiter oh, called no. Carlos. Arrest. Oh, no. <laughs> Happy? Mm. I could sit here all night. That is good. Because now we, we must uh, talk of, of the wedding. Our wedding. <laughs> Our wedding. Oh, go on then, talk. When? Um, the summer. What about this summer? Oh, no, no, not the summer. We, we, we marry now, Mabisa. As soon as possible. Now, why? What's the rush? I, I, I wish it. Well, if that's what you want. <laughs> I do. Well, I think it's a bit um, sudden. I don't want people thinking. Thinking what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. But, well, I think I'd like to wait a couple of months at least. It is not possible, wait. Why? <sighs> Carlos? I, I forget about the, the permit. Permit? What permit? When I, when I get the different jobs, I, I forget to uh, renew the work permit. I, I, I do not tell them. I don't know what you're talking about. So, it's, it's better I have a wife. Nice English girl like yourself. Better? Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's better I have English wife, then, then there is uh, no trouble, no, no trouble with the, uh, with the police. Is that why you asked me to marry me? So that you could get a work permit? If, if, if it is better I, uh, I, I pay you, then, then I, I will pay you. Is it all right, then? If, if you wish it, we, we do not live together, then OK? You want a permit to stop in this country? And that was the reason. No, 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 my bishop. You must not do that. It, 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 there is no need. We, we, we marry sooner. Uh, why not? Why not? There is no, no trouble, eh? I'm, I'm sorry. I make a mistake. Do you please go now? We, we marry, then, then I, I, I go away. Please go, Carlos. Please. But, but there, there, there is no, no trouble, huh? Next, Derek let her down just when she thought I marriage was at last within her grasp. Is it a promotion, do you mean? No, not exactly. Uh... They're putting me in charge of another area. Well, if it's not a promotion, then what's the point? Powers that be. But why now, all of a sudden? Oh, it's been on the cards for some time. You never mentioned it I before. I didn't think it would really happen. Well, well, can't you say no? Well, Mavis, that wouldn't create a very good impression, would it? I do have my career to think of. Well, what about the house? I mean, we've got the house to think of now. No, but it's not as if we made a firm commitment, is oh, it? Oh, Derek, I've put out a lot of money in surveyor's fees. Now, I've told Mrs Ashbrook that we're definitely having it. She's moving out next well, month. Not actually signed yet. I mean, only today I was thinking if we work very hard, then we might have it ready for the new year. I was going to throw a little new year party. 
Mavis, I'm sorry. Truly. These things happen. Do they? Yes. You're really backing out, aren't you? No, I'm not. Don't be silly. <laughs> well, why then? I, I've told you, they're moving me. Well, what difference does that make? I mean, you're only helping me buy the house. It's not well, as I if shall you... need the money for other purposes now, what won't I? What purposes? Well, the new area's further away. I shall have to find alternative accommodation nearer the work. I won't be able to stop with my mother so much now. Oh. Your mother. She's behind all this, isn't she? She's found out and she's stopped you. Well, I had to tell her, didn't I? Couldn't keep it a secret. Oh, no, you can't keep anything secret from your precious mother. Mavis, please, don't she talk to my mother like that. She's feared and she's just spoiled everything and I was so looking forward to it, the first real home. Well, perhaps you can still have it. Oh, I, I can't afford it. Oh, Derek, what's the use? If you won't fight her, then I certainly can't. Mavis, it, it's not so terrible. I mean, having a house is a big responsibility. It's not exactly as if you won't have a home. You've still got this nice, cosy little place. I'm sure Rita and Len will let you stop here if you explain to them. Derek, please don't back out. I'm not backing out. It's just... Circumstances have changed. Mavis? Will you please go? What? I said, will you please go now? Go on, please. Mavis, I'm sorry you're taking it like this. I really am sorry. By the way, hmm? this new territory, where exactly is it you didn't say? Oh, didn't I? No. Uh, well, it's sort of... Birkenhead. Head. The fell-walking Victor Pendlebury was the next to disappoint her. His suggestion was something she just couldn't go along with. Yes. I'm not terribly keen on some public houses late at night. No, they, they can get a bit rough. And there might not be many more opportunities like this. Well, after you moved to Saddlewood. You know, cosy evenings alone with a bottle of Montefiore. No. You're a, a very worldly person, really. Yes, I suppose I am. Only we've, uh, we've got a lot in common, haven't we? A love of literature, a feeling for nature. Yes, I suppose we have. I mean... It'd be a pity. Well, it's... It's quite a big cottage. Big enough for two. Why don't you come and share it with me? Do you mean... get married? Who knows, I mean... if the trial works out. Trial? Why not? Anyway, here's to us. Emily was a great help and comfort at times like these. I can't say I'm really surprised that he'd make that sort of proposition. No. Well, he's very bohemian. The trouble is, I'm not. <laughs> it's all very strange. Can you imagine sitting here 20 years ago, calmly discussing whether or not you should live with a man? Well, less than that, really. It's all gone too fast for me. But what do I do? Well, do you love him? Oh, yes, I think so. Oh, that sounds awful, doesn't it? I, well, I don't really know. Well, if you never saw him again, could you still go on living happily? Well, I'd miss him. I'd definitely miss him. You see, Mavis, this sounds rather tactless, but... Well, it is an opportunity. And I don't get many. No, I keep telling myself that. I mean, I may not get another chance. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I'm not but... getting any younger. I, don't... I keep telling myself that as well. And you're right, it is an opportunity. And it is the first time that any man's actually asked me to go and live with him. I just wish... 
I know. Oh, I feel like going out, having a meal and going to the pictures. I thought Victor was coming. Well, he is. That's why I want to go out. I mean, I've got nothing to say to him yet, Emily. Well, surely I can take a couple of days to decide what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Come on. There's a new Chinese opened in the precinct and Gandhi's at the Luxy. We'll make it Oriental night. I'm not being silly, am I? No, you're not. You take as much time as you want. But for now, get your coat on. And when Derek came back into her life, she was horrified to learn that he had a secret. Just for the couple of girlfriends to Blackpool. Anyway, you don't want to hear all this. Oh, yes, I do, Mavis. I want to hear everything that's happened to you. Well, I met this man, Norris Birchall. Oh, yes. Oh, he was a, a very nice person, very kind. So you and him... Oh, are... no. No, nothing really came of it. Oh, good. Uh, I mean... Well, you know what I mean. Anyway, what about you? What have you been doing? Ah, uh, well, I can't say life has been easy, Mavis. Eventful, yes. Easy, no. I've been through quite a few upheavals. Oh. You see, Mavis, ever since our wedding plans oh, came uh, to nothing... Oh, Derek. Look, in my opinion, that is one subject we should put firmly behind us. Oh, I've tried, Mavis. But, of course, realising that you were rejecting me, well, quite frankly, I came pretty close to a breakdown. And it didn't help, knowing that, well, partly at least, it was my own fault. Oh, Derek! No. No, I don't want you to blame yourself. No reason for you to feel guilty. Anyway... I did try to forget, and I admit, quite frankly, that in those first difficult months, I looked elsewhere for consolation. And did you find it, um, consolation, I mean? I thought I had, Mavis. Oh, but in fact you haven't. No, no, I soon realised it wasn't the real thing. No, it was a mistake, Mavis. Melon for... Uh, well, I'm the melon. Sir, the pâté maison. Thank you. Bon appétit. Thank you very much. Do you mind me asking about her, the, the woman you wanted consolation of? Oh, as a matter of fact, her father owns the firm I'm working for now. Oh. Uh, a, a widow. We met socially at a function. A very sophisticated sort of woman, Mavis. Totally different from you. And I gather it didn't work out? No, no. I soon realised that uh, <clears throat> Angela and I were quite unsuited. Totally unsuited, in fact. No, I should never have married her. Pardon? Did you say... Do you mean that you, you're married? Pardon away the biggest mistake of my life, Mavis. Well, I don't see how anything's changed, Derek. I and mean, I've heard all these tragic stories before. And quite honestly, I think you've got a cheek bursting in here just to take me on yet another guided tour of this battleground you call a marriage. Well, what did you think I'd burst in for, then? Anyway, I've hardly started. I am living in the middle of a horror movie, Mavis. There have been scenes in that bedroom... Oh, please, Derek. There's a limit to what I can take. You won't have the heating on. She hogs all the covers, and now she's got this poodle. Goes berserk if I wear my silk-striped pyjamas. My dear mother, God rest her soul, gave me those pyjamas. Plus, it's not outstrained, and the carpet is... Well, it's, it's, it's like going for a walk in the Lake District. Oh, what do you want me to do about it? Take it for walkies or something? Appear in your lounge pretending to be a lamppost? Maybe. That's coarse. That's Angela language. Well, I'm sorry, Derek, but I'm rapidly running out of sympathy and patience. I mean, if things are as bad as you pay, well, why don't you leave the woman? I have left her. I beg your pardon. I've left, Angela. The marriage is finished. I don't believe you. It's the truth. Cross my heart. <laughs> yes, it's the truth for tonight, but then you'll go crawling back. Mavis! Is that how you truly see me? An unscrupulous womaniser? Here for a few stolen moments of guilty passion? Well, not exactly, but, I mean, I am at your mercy, aren't I? I mean... Well, I'm risking my good name by allowing these nocturnal visits. Believe me, Mavis, this is the end of a chapter. I've burnt my bridges, and soon I'll be a free man. 
It's all very well coming to the end of chapters and burning bridges, Derek, but have you actually told Angela? <laughs> I came home this evening after a hard day. I mean, these days you have to move fast in the stationery business. Angela's gone off to the amateur drums. She's playing Lady Macbeth. She landed the role against strong opposition. Chief contender went down with food poisoning. Anyway, she's doing her thing at the village hall. The poodle's going wild in the bedroom. There's not a scrap of food on the table. My odious stepson, Neville, the walking sneer, is playing darts in the kitchen. I made two attempts at the fridge and was told to get out before he pinned me to the wall. I thought enough is enough. I sat down. I wrote a farewell letter, spelling out my reasons for leaving and stressing there would be no coming back. And then I walked out of the house and into the rain. My marriage is finished, Mavis. The die is cast. Irrecoverably. Ir ir Irrevocably. Cast. But finally, when Derek got his life sorted out, she did take that long walk down the aisle, and he and Mavis got married. Why, I, Derek Bernard Wilton, may not be joined in matrimony to Mavis Riley. Why, I, Derek Bernard Wilton, may not be joined in matrimony to Mavis Riley. I do solemnly declare... I do solemnly declare that I know no... That I know not of any lawful impediment why I, Mavis Riley, may not be joined in matrimony to Derek Bernard Wilton. Of any lawful impediment why I, Mavis Riley, may not be joined in matrimony to Derek Bernard Wilton. Now, say to each other, I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Derek Bernard Wilton, do take thee, Mavis Riley, to be my lawful wedded wife. To witness that I, Derek Bernard Wilton, do take thee, Mavis Riley, to be my lawful wedded wife. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Mavis Riley, do take thee, Derek Bernard Wilton, to be my lawful wedded husband. To witness that I, Mavis Riley, do take thee, Derek Bernard Wilton, to be my lawful wedded husband. Good. Would you put the ring on the bride's finger? It is now my pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations. You may kiss the bride. Told you I'd get him here. And I did. Derek told Mavis about Angela, and he did sort things out before he married. Emily hadn't been so lucky. She lived to rue the day she accepted Arnold's hand in marriage. I want to be fair with you, Arnold. The reasons I gave you for not marrying you, they were all genuine reasons. They still are. But they don't seem as insuperable now. But that's where wanting to be fair with you comes in. You see, I've been subjected to a lot of pressure from Deirdre, from others. They say I must have been quite mad to have turned you down, and I'm worried that the way I feel now has something to do with that pressure. I don't think it has. I think it's because I've grown more fond of you and I don't feel frightened by the prospect of marriage anymore. That's what I think. Will you marry me, Emily? Yes, Arnold. I will. Is there a ring? Uh, yes, if you'll place it on the cushion. Now, if you will take the ring and place it on the bride's left hand and hold it there. Now, repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Arnold Henry Swain. Uh, to witness that I, Arnold Henry Swain. Do take thee, Emily Bishop. Do take thee, 
Emily Bishop. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. Now you, Emily, I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Emily Bishop. To witness that I, Emily Bishop. Do take thee, Arnold Henry Swain. To take thee, Arnold Henry Swain. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Arnold and Emily, having consented to be joined together and having witnessed the same before the persons here present and having symbolized your marriage by the joining of hands and the receiving of a ring, I declare that you are now husband and wife together. Two minutes and I would have locked up. Oh, my lucky day then. At least I hope it is. Uh, am I right in saying that a Mr. Arnold Henry Swain lives here? Uh, he works here, but I'm afraid he isn't in at the moment. Good enough. Been chasing him around the country for three months, has this? Oh. Oh, sorry, I should have said uh, industrial and general insurance. Can I just leave this here and uh, I'll come and pick it up sometime tomorrow? Uh, yes. What shall I say? Um... Well, he's just got to sign it, you see. Uh, you see, Mr. Swain took out this policy on the life of Mrs. Swain umpteen years ago now, and she wants to surrender it. But uh, we can't pay her out without his authority, as he's the legal owner of the policy. So if he could just sign it where I've marked it, and then you or somebody else witness it, I'll pick it up tomorrow, send it off to Worthing, and we can pay her out. Worthing? Yeah. That's where Mrs. Swain lives. I thought there must be some mistake. Mr. Swain's mother died many years ago. Ah, yes, this isn't his mother, love. This is his wife. You see, Mrs. Margaret Patricia Swain, 24 The Meadows, Worthing, Sussex. You see, this is what we call a husband and wife policy. Sorry, I can't understand how anyone can do it. I... Please, I... please. I don't. I... Emily. Don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. You must go. Just go. Emily. Go, please. I can't stand hearing any more. Please go. But there's no sense to it to say that I'm married to her. I'm not. I'm not. Not really. Not in any real way. You don't seem to... Words don't mean the same as they do to me. You're married. You're married. But only to you in here, in here. You are not married to me. I am. It's got no meaning to say that I'm married to anybody else. You don't seem to know what meaning is. There is no meaning. There's no... You married me, but it was a pretense. It's a lie. It is not, and it never was the truth. Understand, understand. You made yourself believe a lie. You made me believe a lie. Everybody. And everything is a lie. No, not everything. You're a bigamist. I haven't seen her for 15 years to me she's dead. You're a bigamist. Please, please understand what I'm saying. You're a bigamist. I know. I know, I know I am. God help me, I don't want to be, but I am. I am a bigamist. The next man, romantically speaking, in her life was the Reverend Bernard Morton. She met him at the wedding of Percy's friend, Olive Clark, and took to him immediately. And it wasn't long before he was calling round for lunch. Their friendship developed from there, and Emily slowly began to hope for something more. Bernard and Emily fell in love, and they looked forward to their life together, until Bernard was told about Emily's breakdown. A mental breakdown was something that Bernard couldn't cope with again. You must be Mrs. Sutton. Good gracious, no. I'm Mr. Sugden's landlady, Emily Bishop. Oh, I see. Pleased to meet you. Uh, perhaps I can introduce you to some of the guests. Oh, that would be nice. May I call you Emily? Why not? Uh, 
Well, thank you for the lunch. It was very good of you to entertain me at such short notice. Not at all. And thank you for tolerating my outbursts of self-pity. What else friends for? Well, I shall see you um, whenever. I look forward to it. Emily, I value our friendship very highly. So do I, Bernard. And if I've said anything to offend you... Not at all. Nothing of the kind. I'm sorry if I put you in an embarrassing situation when I asked about the holiday. I, I really should have thought more carefully. Believe me, I have no I'll wish... come. What? I've thought it over. And I'd like very much to go on holiday with you. <laughs> but what changed your mind? I realised I was worrying not about us, but about what people would think of us. And it struck me that if I haven't earned people's respect by now, I never shall. I don't really care what people think of me. Not even Mr. Sugden? Especially not Mr. Sugden. Oh, well, a great surprise. <laughs> Do go in. It's... Uh... Not really, uh, I mean, uh, for entertaining guests in. Uh, still, uh, sit down all the same. I'll see if there's any coffee. Well, you did say it was fairly dismal. I shouldn't complain. It's really very good. How long can you stay? Oh, dear. Sounds as though you've taken a very gloomy view of my prospects. From your letter, I thought you were the one taking the gloomy view. I didn't mean to give that impression. Well, thank you for your companionship. And I hope you will permit me to keep in touch. It's rather the sort of thing you write to somebody you don't expect to see much of. I was allowing for that possibility. I know you're soft-hearted and... I... I didn't see myself playing the lost dog. I don't want to, anyway. Do you understand? I'm awfully pleased that we met, you know. You do know that. Oh, Bernard. How, what have I said? You sound like somebody in a Noel Coward play. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. You know, it, it seems to be the English dramatic tradition for all vicars to be treated as ludicrous. I mean, you wouldn't mind so much if it was because they were wicked or corrupt. But they're always laughable because they're concerned to be good. Now, why is that? Because people think it's a hopeless cause. Would uh, a cause be laughable just because it might be hopeless? Perhaps. But what are we talking about? Oh, hopeless causes. In regard to you, Emily, uh, I've allowed myself to... I mean, I, I, I've rather built up in my mind, you see, to... Uh, rather more, perhaps, than I ought to have done. I wish I was sure what you're saying, Bernard. Oh, it's no good, I'm afraid. It's my fault. Are you saying... I really don't want to say what I think you might be saying. I mean, of course. I've used the word love rather a lot in my life. Odd. Anyway, there you are. I believe I have fallen in love, as they say. Oh, dear. I don't suppose you can let me down gently, so don't even try. Let, let, let's take it as read, shall we? Bernard, why do you think I'm here? I don't have much to offer, and I have no future at all. But such as it is, do you think? Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite a needlewoman. Oh, not very good. Out of practice. One hears of men taking that up nowadays. I'm told it's very soothing. I just like to take out the box of threads every so often. Takes me back. Worked in a draper's shop for years. Really? 
years. Very long seeming years at the time. I don't remember you ever mentioning that. Sometimes I look back and I see myself and I wonder if I'm not remembering something in a book. Dickens, probably. Is it just an extraordinary coincidence? Is? The fact that Mr. Sugden's also getting married. I'm sorry, my brain seems to be flying about. I suppose it is. But he just happens to meet a woman who whose disposition is so remarkable that marriage is not out of the question. It's something of a coincidence. I'm not sure I follow you. Or are you suggesting that they wouldn't be marrying if it wasn't for us? Well, who knows? Even Mr. Sugden has his mellow mood. He's offered, by the way, to bake and ice a cake. Oh, that's uh, kind. I tried to tell him that I don't really want a cake. Do not. Why not? Maybe that I'm a little peculiar about this. Of course you have a cake and you cut it together and of course you have your photograph taken, both of you holding the knife, of course. It's all part of the ritual. And I'm afraid I'll feel faintly ridiculous going through the ritual. Why? Oh, perhaps I can't explain it. All right, we'll have a cake. No, I, I want you to explain why you wouldn't want one. Why not? For the same reason I wouldn't want a veil and a train. Oh, I don't suppose anyone would ever suggest a veil and a train. Exactly. Call it just an eccentricity. Can you put up with that? A husband ought to be able to answer yes to that. Absolutely and utterly yes. I ought to be able to say it. I don't know whether I can. My mother was ill, you know, for a long time, mentally ill. Oh. For a long time before she died. It all started with her dressing for journeys that she wasn't going on. And then she would walk out of the house and she wouldn't know where she was. See, someone's mentioned it to you. Mentioned it, that's all. And you're wondering why I didn't tell you. It's not that. It wasn't that I was hiding it. I was ill. I got better. That's all. Oh, yes. It's not you who's wanting here. It's me. I don't think about it. It doesn't seem so very important to me. Does it seem important to you? Emily, alone again, settled down to an uneasy peace with Percy, who'd moved in as a lodger. Meanwhile, Mavis and Derek were blissfully happy in married life. That is, until an unwelcome visitor from Mavis's past appeared on their doorstep. Victor Pendlebury had moved up in the world, and as Derek was at a crossroads in his career, he offered him a job. Derek accepted, but his suspicions were aroused when he discovered that Victor was seeing a little too much of his wife. Um, but perhaps you'd prefer a sherry rather than a cup of tea. Oh, yes, please. Oh. After all, it is the cocktail hour. Yes. Well, uh, sit, uh, sit down. <laughs> How bad is your headache? Um, pardon? Your headache? How bad? Oh, well, it's not too bad. I mean, I've had worse. Well, good health. A vodka sante. I could cure it for you. A bun? Your headache. Oh, how do you carry a bottle of aspirin about with you? Reflexology. Oh, I've heard of that. I've studied it, actually. Really? Would you like me to try and cure your headache? Well... Right. Take your shoes off. I beg your pardon? Your shoes. Take them off. Oh, oh Victor, there's no need. I mean, a glass of hot milk... Reflexology. Oh. Goes back thousands of years. Does it? The idea is to stimulate the channels of energy flowing through the body, where they end here in the feet, oh. and where we can stimulate them by deep compression massage. Oh, really? Now, are you ready? I must warn you, though, my feet are a bit ticklish. Well, I'll just start by rubbing your ankle to completely relax you. Oh, 
Haven't you got strong, firm fingers? All the better to relax you with. <laughs> now, I'm going to rub my hand from your big toe down to your heel. <laughs> That's tickling. Can you feel yourself relaxing, Mavis? Tension oozing out of you. Tranquility creeping in. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, I, I didn't realise feet were so sensitive. My wife's oh. foot down immediately. Derek. Hello, Derek. Oh. How could you, Mavis? How could you? You were very naive, Mavis. Pardon? I said you were very naive. Naive? I'd had a. Inviting don't... Victor up here, whatever the reason. Well, it was done in all innocence, Derek. Honestly, it oh, was. That's exactly it, Mavis. You are an innocent abroad. Am I? The wiles, the subterfuges, the appetites of men like Victor Pendlebury. They're a foreign language to you. Well, I wouldn't quite say that. I can that. see that now, having talked to... Having considered the facts of the matter very carefully. I see that you were indeed the innocent party. Oh, I was, Derek, I was. I bet it never for one moment occurred to you, did it, what was in that man's mind? He said he just wanted to cure my headache. And you believed him, of implicitly? Of course I did. That says it all, Mavis. Says it all. You know, I really think we ought to wrap you in pink cotton wool. You're too delicate, too innocent a creature to be allowed to roam at will in this... Nasty, brutish world. Oh, Derek. But there is one criticism I must make. One stricture I must level at you, Mavis. Oh. You have a lot in common with Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe? You are not aware of the power of your sexuality, Mavis, over lonely, pathetic creatures like Victor Pendlebury. So if you just remember that in future, a smile, a twinkle in your blue eyes. Oh, Greyish blue. And passions are aroused, Mavis. All right? Yes, Derek. Good. Is that it? Is that what? The end of the matter. I must just see Victor Pendlebury tomorrow and tell him what to do with his job, and then I think we can put it all behind us. You know, I quite like a nice cup of cocoa and perhaps one of your fairy cakes. Derek? Yes, maybe. Did you mean it when you called me a Jezebel? You are a Jezebel, Mavis, definitely. Albeit unwittingly. Derek's romantic view of Mavis knew no bounds, so when a poetry competition was announced at the Rovers, Derek couldn't wait to put pen to paper. When Mavis was given a reading of the finished work, she was not keen on it being entered at all. Well, you've read mine and ripped mine to bits. It's only fair I should hear yours. Well, it's meant to be a surprise, but... Um, all right. Mavis, my Marilyn. Oh, Derek. She was a legend of her time. Nations applauded. Whole continents were in her thrall. The world resounded with the name Munro. There was another goddess of flesh, not celluloid, in Weatherfield, not Hollywood. One who, for me, outmatched, outshone, and, yes, outlived Munro. <laughs> who needs the silver screen? when I have the silver in her hair? Who needs the wind-blown skirt when I can nightly gaze upon the lifting hem oh, of my own personal Munro? Her breasts are downy. I beg your pardon. Mavis, I know what you're going to say, 
but this is adult company. This is 1993, and I can mention the word breast for heaven's sake. Yes, but you're talking about me, mine. Of course. It's all about you. Well, if you think I'm going to sit here while you go on in, in public... I am not going on about them, Maybe I'm merely mentioning them and passing on. Her breasts are downy, like the peach. Peaches are hairy. They are downy. They've got little soft, thick hairs all over them. How dare you? Maybe for God's sake. Oh, I'm not listening to this. You'll have to when I'm reading it. I won't. Maybe for goodness sake, grow up. Derek, if you read that out loud, I shall shout, I shall heckle, I shall throw something. Maybe this is the most flattering, most tender love poem anyone has ever had written about them. It's all so damn good. And anyone who wasn't a total moron could see that. Oh, so I'm a total moron now. Yes, you are as far as poetry is concerned. You've admirably proved that with your Mr. Fox. How dare you! Well, it's true. Mr. Fox comes out to play. The moon, it shines as bright as day. <gasps> Mockery. That's one of the lowest forms of wit. But all I should expect from you, pornographer. Emily and Mavis, two ladies who've had perhaps more than their fair share of laughter and tears. Their lives have certainly been a constant source of interest to everyone who watches and enjoys Coronation Street. That interest and enjoyment is in part based on the fact that no matter how many knocks life throws at Emily and Mavis, they still carry on. They always look to the future and hope for better things, but manage to retain a healthy appreciation of what they would like to have been and of what they really are. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the lives of Emily Bishop and Mavis Wilton. Goodbye. Oh, does the minestrone go on the uh, third shelf still? Uh, no, first I've reorganised this. Oh, suit. that's much better. Mrs. Holt will be pleased. Time and motion study. That's what they'll put on my gravestone, you know. She reorganised the soups. Oh, well, I've always wanted to be stormy and passionate and tempestuous. But you can't be. Not when you're born with a tidy mind. Oh, mean, moody and magnificent. Oh, yes. Lana Turner, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, no, Jane Russell. Of course. Mind you, she had the equipment for it. <laughs> Didn't she, Mr. Dadlock? Didn't know what? <laughs> Jane Russell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't come in here to be made fun of. Oh, I know, but we're not, Mr. Tatler. We were just seeking your male opinion. Mm -hmm. Do you think either of us qualify for the description moody and magnificent? You must not me. Oh, well, we can both be very mean. <laughs> yes, you can both be very daft and all. I'm surprised that you grown up women like you giggling like two schoolgirls. There's no age limit on giggles, Mr. Tatler. Small brown. Yes, please. You know, when you get approaching 80, you lose taste in frivolities. Oh, Mr. Tatlock, you should have said. Well, I, I just did, didn't I? And I never did go in for top-heavy women. Oh! I mean, Jane Russell, bursting out of a blouse like that. I could never see out in it. Oh, 